Hey guys, welcome back to another uh, Pokemon Red and Blue solo run. Today's Pokemon will be Clefairy. Now if we take a look at Clefairy's stats, uh, it's very slow. Not as slow as Slowpoke, but it's still pretty bad. It doesn't have quite as much total stats as Slowpoke, but it has respectable special at 60. And it's got pretty nice HP. Uh, more importantly, uh, look here at its uh, its learn set, level up move set isn't that great. Uh, defense curl at level 39 will allow us to take advantage of the badge boost. Uh, and other than that, its its level ups aren't that great, but it has a pretty deep uh, TM move pool, which will be pretty nice. I think it'll be just as good as Slowpoke, especially when you get to the SSN uh, and you get Body Slam. And I think it could be better after that, but I'm not quite sure. Now, the two things just looking at before I start the run uh, would be the fact that I don't have a uh, Stab Psychic and I don't have access to Surf, but it, overall still a pretty amazing uh, move pool. I don't have Amnesia, but Defense Curl will have to fill in. The rules for the run are simple. Number one, no use of items inside of battle. Number two, no switching, only using Clefairy this run. Number three, uh, no use of skips or exploits outside of the badge boost. And number four, no saving between Elite Four members to allow me to not go for luck-based strategies. And that's pretty much it. And let's get right into the run. Uh, I'm going to show the first rival fight here. There's nothing to it, but I figured that eventually I might lose one of these, so I might as well show it. Now on to Viridian Forest. I do opt. I know I'm going to have to level up for Brock, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, but I get really unlucky with poison here. Uh, the first time I get poison, luckily I can. I, there's a free antidote for me to use. But the second time, I actually have to go back to the Poke Center, so it's not that bad. Uh, it's going pretty slow right now. Uh, I do battle all the Bug Catchers, and then when I finally make it to Pewter City. I attempt to fight the junior trainer and I get absolutely destroyed. I gotta stop fighting this guy. It's pretty awful. Now, after that, I reload and I try Brock just to gauge how far off I am. Uh, and here's how much a critical hit pound does against Geodude. Hey, that's pretty good. So we're off to grinding. And here I'll grind up to level 12. And level 12 allows me to get past the junior trainer. Uh, and that gets me to level 13, which allows me to get Sing. Now at first glance you would think Sing's pretty good, uh, Sleep's a very powerful status effect in Generation 1, they can attack when they wake up and it can last up to uh, I think 7 turns, uh, but here is something I didn't uh, I didn't know. What I learned here was that uh, two things, 4 Growls will cause Tackle to only do 2 damage, that's good to know, uh, and second is that Brock has 5 full heals on each Pokemon, so 5 for Geodude and 5 for Onyx, it's awful. So it's only got 15 PP, so that means it'll take six of these to land. And the accuracy on this is awful, so it'll take almost all 15 just to start putting stuff to sleep. It's not that great. So overall, it's probably better to save the 15 charges of Sing for Onyx. Now, there is actually one battle where I actually faint Geodude, but by the time Onyx comes in, I'm at 11 HP and I die. So even if I was more healthy, um, I, just, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So what do we do from here? I grind up to level 16 and I decide to just give Brock another try just for science. And the attempts here, they aren't that bad. The main thing here is that I learned that it's absolutely critical for you to be level 18 to get double slap because you run out of power points with pound. And I got really close to winning, but unfortunately Growl has 40 PP and the odds of me lasting that many turns and getting off struggle and then still winning is very slim, if not impossible. So with that, we hit the very long grind to get to level 18. Uh, now we got more stats and we got double slap, so we weren't out of power points. Uh, so it's time to see how we do against Brock. And since we've learned the strats from earlier and we know that he has five full heals, uh, for some whatever reason, I have no idea why, I growl, Geo did four times, I get the tackle down to two per use, and then I take him down eventually. And then I use my 15 charges of seeing, I get rid of the full heals, and then I can finally start taking advantage of sleep. Uh, Onyx, if he bides, uh, I simply just growl at him. And this really wasn't too bad. We slowly just chip our way down and we get the first badge in. And we clock in at a whopping 2.04 of in-game time. So over two hours. But you got to realize I'm using an emulator and I do speed up quite a bit. So this isn't accurate. And maybe in a future video, I'll come up with a formula to get an exact time. It does kind of bother me, but it's not 
too big. On the way to Mount Moon, uh, I do skip some trainers, and I find myself at level 20. I'm noticing Clefairy, he's in the fast level up group, so I definitely noticed that. Mount Moon itself is not really an issue. Uh, Pokemon actually lets you escape this time, and the extra levels mean the trainer battles aren't too bad. I pick up the escape rope, the rare candy, and this run I do take a slight detour to pick up Mega Punch. And I also catch a Paris since I'll need a Dig user and something to use Cut with. This is just a good Pokemon to pick. Uh, then the Raticate Rocket actually gets me this time, but it's because I didn't use a potion. And then I reloaded it, and I was healthier, and I still took some damage, but I was able to squeak by. Uh, I noticed that you can skip this trainer. I'm just stupid, and I didn't notice it. We pick up the Helix Fossil, and we head to Cerulean. Now I decided that since I had some extra levels and I had Mega Punch this time, I would just go ahead and take on Misty. And Mega Punch made the fight overall pretty easy. Starmie does hit hard and it can take some hits, but we are able to get the second badge before we even go up to Bill, which is pretty nice. And then we go into the second rival fight and it was a breeze. Mega Punch pretty much one shots all of his Pokemon. I uh, avoid the dreaded sand attacks from Pidgey at the start of the fight and I'm able to pretty much roll my way through it. I decide to attempt to save some time, the Nugget Bridge battles weren't really a problem, and I never go and heal. Now by the time I make it to the last fight on this route, I have 1 HP, but so I save it and I decide to try it anyway. Uh, and luckily the level advantage means I outspeed, and I don't miss any with Mega Punch, and I actually make it through the fight at 1 HP, and then we go to everyone's favorite NPC, Bill. Bill the science guy. I also picked up a professional strategy here and I use an escape rope that I got from Mount Moon to take me back to Celadon and save some time. I pick up Dig, I teach it to Paris, and we head down to Vermilion City. Aboard the SSN I head directly for Body Slam, I replace Pound with it, and Rival 3 is barely worth mentioning. Uh, I feel like I'm really high level here and I use Body Slam to just Kobe all of his Pokemon. With cut in hand, I head towards Lieutenant Surge, and I make a mistake here. The idea is that I skip the Poke Center in town, beat Surge, and then I dig my way back to Cerulean, and I save some more time, but I make a mistake here. I don't know why I did this, but we'll talk about it soon. Lieutenant Surge wasn't as hard as I thought he would be. On my first time, I whizzed past the Voltorb and the Pikachu, but I respected the Raichu a little too much. I attempted to put it to sleep first, but the horrible accuracy turns out to be a waste, and it, I get knocked out uh, as a result. But the second attempt, I say to hell with this sing, and I go straight for Body Slam, and it makes the fight much more of a cakewalk. Uh, we have our third badge, but more importantly, we have access to Thunderbolt, which Clefairy can learn, and we will wind up keeping this throughout the entire run. Now right here, I'm, I'm incredibly ignorant. I use the Dig Strap. I'm not quite sure where to use it, but I, just, I do it, and I forgot to pick up the Bike Voucher, which means I can't get the bike right now. So I just opt to keep going forward, and we'll figure this out later. We'll come back for it later. I head towards Rock Tunnel, avoiding the trainers that I can, and here is where I run into an unforeseen problem uh, by teaching Thunderbolt so early. Maybe not even teaching Thunderbolt, but just the fact that I didn't keep another attacking move. So here I only have two attacking moves, both of them have 15 PP. Uh, and there are several ground and rock Pokemon trainers in here, meaning that Thunderbolt does nothing, it's ineffective, and rock resists normal types like Body Slam. So I first noticed this when I make it to this trainer right here with the Charmander. I'm out of Body Slam PP and I just can't use Thunder uh, Bolt and I have to reset. So the next time I try, I carefully manage my moves to the best that I can and I make it to the Hiker at the end of the tunnel and I only have three Body Slams left. Uh, I attempt to go for a very tedious struggle strategy, but by the time I'm on the second Pokemon I'm only at 4 HP and I'm swiftly fainted. Now being the stubborn person that I am, I go through Rock Tunnel a third time hoping that this issue will just somehow resolve itself. I do make it further this time, but I'm completely walled off by the Graveler on the same hiker and I need to come up with something else. So what I ended up having to do, for whatever reason I put Bubble Beam in the Poke Center to save some bag, or yeah, bag space, and um, I take it out, I learn it, I put it over Minimize, which somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Minimize triggers badge boost. And I don't necessarily like evasion moves if I can avoid it, so I get rid of it, we get Bubble Beam. And now look how easy it is after we get Bubble Beam. I definitely, I wasted a whole lot of time here. 
At this point, we pass through Lavender Town and on to Celadon City. I pick up two fresh waters, I trade one to the girl for Ice Beam, keep one for the guard, and before I head to the rocket hideout, I go ahead and go pick up Fly. And now that we have Fly, I go ahead and I backtrack to Vermilion to get the bike voucher, then I get the bike, and then this is a quick tangent, but has anyone ever noticed that the bike is worth almost a million Poke Dollars? And just some random guys just giving you something worth that much, the bike voucher. Even if you like undercut the price, you could sell it for $500,000 and you're still losing money on it. It's just, that's a lot of money. After Cerulean, I visit Mr. Psychic to get the TM. And then we finally head back to the rocket hideout. I grab a PP up on the first floor. I grab the rare candy below, obtain the lift key, and then we challenge Giovanni. With Psychic, Giovanni doesn't offer much of a challenge. Uh, perhaps Ice Beam might have made this fight easier, but I didn't really see the need for that. I had a massive level advantage over Kangaskhan, and it can be dangerous, but it wasted moves and it used rage, and that just kind of sealed the fate of this battle. Uh, we get the Sif scope, and we head over to Pokemon Tower. Now, Rival 4 is perhaps the easiest rival yet. A Kobe, every single one of his Pokemon, one move per Pokemon. No challenge whatsoever. Kobe! And then somewhere between the rival fight and Mr. Fuji at the end, I do hit level 39, which gives us access to Defense Curl, which will be key into getting the badge boost later. I'm not really sure how much immediate use it'll have, but for the Elite Four, definitely. After making our way up the tower and rescuing Mr. Fuji, we get the Poke Flute, fly back to Celadon, and go ahead and challenge Erica. But first, we pick up this little PP up on the right side of Celadon here. I'm slightly skittish about facing Erica on this one. Uh, Razor Leaf just does heavy damage, and our last run was really rough. But it turns out that not being weak to grass really helps against the grass gym leader. I don't one-shot any of the Pokemon, but my level was pretty high at this point, and I'm pretty bulky so I can take the hits. Uh, and it was actually a pretty easy fight. At this point, I'm not really sure where to go next. I think we could do all right against all the remaining gems. So I opt to go to Saffron City first so I can pick up that elusive rare candy that we couldn't get on our last run down in Fuchsia. In Sylph Co, Rival 5 did give me a lot of trouble. I can't one-shot any of his Pokemon even after several defense curls. And as of now, the only useful badge boost we even has is attack, which only affects our body slam. The second attempt, Pidgeot itself takes me really low, and by the time I get to execute, I'm in the red, and I don't really stand a chance. Attempt number three, I opt not to use the defense curls, seeing how it's going to be two hits either way, and sand attack is just annoying. You already know how I feel about sand attack, and this is where I figure I need at least two defense curls to get my attack high enough to one-hit the Growlithe and avoid taking some unnecessary damage, and I actually make it to Blastoise this time, but Thunderbolt doesn't one-hit, and I'm only eight health, so it's over. The next attempt, I set up enough defense curls so that I can one-shot the Growlithe, but Leech Seed and Reflect bring Body Slam damage down to nothing, and in hindsight I should have just started using Thunderbolt or Psychic, even though they are resisted, and I probably could have made it through, but my mistake. For the last attempt, the beginning is about the same, Execute does get off a of Leech Seed, but a second Body Slam finishes it off. Alakazam survives a body slam, but I'm healthy enough to get off two Thunderbolts against the Blastoise, and I finally get the win here. Now this has been the toughest fight of the run by far. Brock was really tough, but it was mainly just a time sink at that point. A quick note is I learned how valuable it is to pick up Lapras for free. It learns Strength and Surf, and it's something you should always do. The first attempt with Giovanni isn't too bad. Um, I didn't heal up, I didn't think it would really matter. But Kangaskhan locks me down with bite, flinches, and then it fin finishes me off from 115 health. And then I'll just kind of chalk that up to being unlucky, and we'll go at it again. And that turned out to be the case, because the second time was much easier, and we just use Psychic and get through all of his Pokemon. Now with that out of the way, we head to face off against Sabrina in the Saffron Gym. Sabrina didn't give me a whole lot of trouble. As we finish up these gyms, you'll kind of see that I'm getting my mileage out of Body Slam. Uh, for this fight, I set up some defense curls to get that attack bump from the badge boost so that I can do a lot more physical damage with it. And as we are all aware, special in Gen 1 is both offensive and defensive, so physical attacks serve me better here in this situation. Alakazam does take a little bit to get down due to recover, but a well-timed critical hit does finish off the fight. I hit level 47, and it feels like we are heading into the home stretch. Next up, it's time to wake up Snorlax, fight too many trainers on Cyclone Road by accident because I was looking at my second monitor, and give Koga a shot. 
Koga took Slowpoke a few attempts, so I figured Clefairy might potentially struggle here, but to my surprise it wasn't the case. Obviously Psychic is super effective against his team, but the extra levels and much higher speed really helped out here. Coughing is a one shot, Muck does take two, but he wastes one of the turns with the X attack. Uh, coughing number two goes down in one hit as well, and then the Weezing takes two. Uh, but he does get off a critical hit sludge that takes me down to half. And now after we have our six badge, we pick up the teeth and surf from Safari Zone. And we pick up strength from the Warden. And more importantly, we get this rare candy that we couldn't get on our last run. And this is a very big moral victory for me, guys. Afterwards, we make our way to Pallet Town. We surf down to Cinnabar, go into the mansion, grab the secret key and the two rare candies, and then we challenge Blaine. Now, Blaine wasn't too hard. While you're watching this clip, let me explain why I start the fight with 27 HP real quick. Now, I was out of potions, and I thought I could just save some money and time, and if I could just somehow sweep this fight, I could magically go back out and save a lot of time, and it wasn't the case at all, and it went exactly how you'd expect it to go. We do heal up, we give it a real try this time, Growlithe gets in some chip damage, I set up some defense curls for the attack badge boost, and this allows my body slams to be strong enough to one hit both Growlithe and Ponyta. Rapidash does take several slams, and Arcanine is a beefy thick boy, so thick that it survives a couple of moves and the fire blast finishes me off. Damn boy, he's thick! Boy, that's a thick ass boy! Damn! We go at it again. I set up a little bit more defense curls to get higher attack. Uh, we got a little bit of luck against Rapidash and the extra badge boost allow us to much more comfortably deal with Arcanine. We don't get hit with Fire Blast. That is seven badges down. Now that we have Blaine's badge and we get the special boost from the badge boost, I take some time and I set it up and we get some lethal psychics. Kangaskhan is no longer on the team at this point. And I think that's really always the wild card when you're fighting Giovanni. But a couple of psychics take out the Rhydon and the regular season is almost over. But first, it's time for rival number 6. I misjudge how many defense curls would be required to one hit the Pidgeot. It takes me to half health and by the time I make it to Blastoise I'm easily within range to be knocked out. But fortunately Blastoise goes for two withdrawals in a row, and despite me having Leech Seed on, uh, it's enough for me to take the win on our first try. And now it's time for one of the hardest parts in Pokemon Red and Blue. It's having the self control to slowly move down in this area without jumping over the ledge so you don't have to run back and start over. I didn't show it in the Slowpoke video but I messed up like three or four times, but look how careful I am right here, and this part is probably harder than Bruno. Next up is Victory Road, and for the most part I avoid the trainers in here, except for a few that are kind of on the way, just to get a little bit more experience so I don't have to grind uh, during the end game. After healing up at the end of Victory Road, I decide to go back to Celadon really quick. I pick up some Calcium and Carbos for some stat boost, and I use five rare candies. I save four so after each battle I can reset my experience so the badge boost, uh, I can control it a little bit more so I don't level up during the battle. The first time I fight Laura Lee, I do something I normally don't do. It's not a full attempt. Since it's the first trainer, I have no progress to lose here. Um, I see how many defense curls it will take to badge boost enough to be able to one hit the Dugong with Thunderbolt. I try three, it's not enough, and I reset. It turns out that the number is four, and I find that out in this attempt. It allows me to one hit Cloyster, Slowbro, and Dugong. Jinx takes a couple of hits. And I even tried Body Slam on my first attempt, but in hindsight, Clefairy's higher special stat makes Thunderbolt outweigh the stab damage of Body Slam. Lapras is very bulky and survives a Thunderbolt, and it looks like five defense curls would be needed at this point, but I'm not convinced that that's necessary. Next up is the world's most pathetic trainer, Bruno. And you'd figure since Clefairy's a normal type in Gen 1, that and he's supposedly the fighting type trainer, that there would be some worries here. But we have Psychic and we outspeed him, and since I can't test the defense curls, I just go with four. And it's time for some Kobe's as we get some very satisfying one hits to the rest of his team. Kobe! And now it's time for Agatha, and this fight will usually be the most annoying at worst and very difficult at best. This time it falls in the very difficult category. It's really hard to set up badge boost anywhere in this fight, especially on the first Gengar. Psychic can't one hit it, 
So I take some damage, go back confuses me, I attempt to set up at least some badge boost, but two isn't enough to one hit the Gobat. I'm down in the yellow health. When I get to Haunter, I get put to sleep, smacked with Dream Eater, and I go back to the first. The next lore of Leafite goes the same at the start, except when I get to Lapras, he critical hits on a Hydro Pump, dealing a nuclear amount of damage to me. And the next attempt, I stupidly, I use Body Slam. It takes three turns, but the Lapras doesn't crit and I make it by. I don't know why I keep using Body Slam, but we still make it. I think the hardest parts of these runs and not being able to save is that you can't really get experience. It's been a few battles since I even fought Agatha, so I haven't had time to really come up with much of a strat strategy. And this time the fight goes horrible. I get confused. I'm not strong enough to one hit anything. Go back comes in, chips me down, it swaps the Haunter, takes me out. Back to Laura Lee, and it's not really a challenge. And I'm not even going to humiliate Bruno anymore. You already know what happened to him. The third Agatha attempt is the worst by far. I get soloed by the first Gengar and it's the worst case scenario. Turn 1 Confuse Ray, turn 2 Hypnosis, turn 3 Dream Eater, and then I get finished off with a Nightshade as if it somehow knew that I would wake up right there. Laura Lee and Bruno go down to a single attempt once again and now it's time for round 4 against Agatha. This time I get lucky with some questionable AI decisions and I set up some badge boost goodness and this allows me to avoid most of the RNG later. And for the most part, I sweep the Pokemon. Uh, the last Gengar takes two Psychics. But for her turn, she did use a retroactive Super Potion. And I was able to get by. Now after we get past Agatha, I'm feeling pretty confident. And I thought she would be the biggest issue. So heading towards Lance, I thought I could just get rid of Body Slam. Put on Ice Beam. And i would do that for a couple of reasons. The obvious reason is that Lance has three Dragons. And the other being the rival battle at the very end is going to have Executor. So that was my reasoning for that. Now I go into this fight. But turn one, I get hit with a Hyper Beam from Gyarados. It critically hits and it one shots me and we have to start over. Laura Lee, Lapras, two hits. Bruno, bad. Now at this point I was rolling my eyes at the thought of facing Agatha again. But her AI made some weird decisions. She swapped to Golbat. It takes a Psychic. And then turn two, she swaps back to the Gengar. It takes a Psychic. Now I do get confused and I take a large chunk of damage, but she switches again, giving me another free move. And I can honestly say that I've never seen the AI swap this much in my limited solo run experiences so far. But by the time I make it to the Haunter, I'm too low to really compete. And since I couldn't one-shot it, I go down once again. Laura Lee, dead. Bruno... This time Agatha goes with a turn 1 Nightshade. It does decent damage, but I would prefer the damage over the status conditions. I get off a big psychic that triggers a potion, and it's still within range to be taken out. Golbat uses Haze, but I didn't set up any defense curls, so no harm no foul. I do lose the, uh, the original badge boost, but whatever. It gets hit with a psychic as well. That triggers a potion, and that's two of the most annoying Pokemon down, and... She's only done a single Nightshade's worth of damage to us. Haunter gets one hit. I decide to set up just a little bit on Arbok. It does get me kind of low, and it really wasn't worth it because I don't even get close to one hitting the Gengar, but I still am able to clutch it out for a win. Our second attempt at Lance pretty much has us praying for no critical hit Hyper Beams on turn one. All we need to do is set up at least a few defense curls and go for the sweep. Turn 1 I get hit for half my health with Hyper Beam. It's a lot of damage, but we are still alive with half health. It has to recharge turn 2. And here I get a little nervous. And I don't really want to continue to set up the defense curls. So I go ahead and I pull up the trigger on a Thunderbolt. A little earlier than I'd like to. Because I don't want to have to retry for being too greedy. I knock out the Gyarados. And then when the second Dragonair comes in, I do set up one more defense curl. And then I hit it with an Ice Beam. It goes down. Second Dragonair. Bonked. Aerodactyl comes in. I'm nervous, but it goes for a Supersonic. It misses. Goes down. And then I outspeed the Dragonite. It's double weak to ice. And we only have one more obstacle in the way of the run. Now here I use my last two rare candies. I get to level 69. Nice. And I head towards the final rival battle. We get lucky that Pidgeot not only goes for slow moves, but it also misses. 
and then we get to fully set up and at this point I don't take any chances and I set up maximum defense curls. It might be a little bit of overkill, but I'm just ready to be done with the run. Alakazam takes a couple of hits due to its amazing special stats, and Rhydon's pretty much the weak link of this team. It goes down to one hit. Arcanine still takes two hits, very thick. Executor also takes two ice beams to go down, and then I had a moment of worry. I do level up after the Executor, thus losing my badge boost stats, because remember, they reset after you level up in a battle. So at this point, it's down to a 1v1 into the game, and my defenses are still raised, but I just don't have any of the extra badge stats. Turn 1, Blastoise just goes for it. He hits a big Hydro Pump, takes me down to half health. Thun Thunderbolt does roughly the same, and then I get flinched here, and I'm prepared for the absolute worst to happen. But a second bite does not flinch me, doesn't do enough damage, and I'm able to get off a second Thunderbolt for lethal damage. Now overall, the Elite Four felt much easier this time around. Agatha was a nuisance as always, and it's the reason for so many attempts, but I did have an easier time with Clefairy overall. The first part of the run at Brock was absolutely brutal, but it really picked up steam after that, and since fighting isn't really prevalent in Gen 1, I didn't really have any true weaknesses throughout the whole game. I do find it kind of funny here, uh, you'll see it here sometime, but my overall time was one minute away from Slowpoke's time and that kind of surprised me that they were so close. Now quickly talking about the game time here, uh, the problem I run into is I'm using an emulator and it has a turbo function, but you can't throttle it, so when you hit turbo it goes up to 7000%, which is, it's a lot faster, I mean it's like every, it's a lot of time, it wastes a lot of time is all I'm trying to say. But in the future, I'm going to look at not using turbo and maybe get more realistic time. But we'll see how that goes. But overall, it was a successful run. I had a lot of fun. And I'm not really sure what I'll work on next, uh, what Pokemon I'll choose. But I think you guys can definitely expect another one of these. Now, once again, any feedback is appreciated. And for now, I'm still having fun making these, and it's a fun hobby. But anyway, guys, that's been another solo run of Pokemon Red and Blue. And I hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you guys on the next video.